Hey everybody, it's me, Tony D, here in my studio in Amherst, Massachusetts, and I'm super excited to be drawing live for you today in celebration of Turning the Page. I hope you'll join me. We'll have a great time. And I'll be joined by my lovely wife, Ange D, here momentarily. So thanks for joining us on a special edition of Drawn to Fantasy with your pal, Tony D. Hello! Hey. How you doing? Uh, I'm really excited to celebrate an anniversary today. Yeah, is it anniversary or birthday? I never could quite tell, but regardless, I'm excited to be here too. Birth anniversary. That sounds good. And a birthery. I like that too. All right, let's do this. What are we doing today? Um, well, I've got, uh, I've had a inside source tell me uh, some fans, some um, friends of Turning the Page are big fans of uh, the Spiderway Chronicles. So I thought maybe we'll start off with a little Spiderway Chronicles. And then Ange, I think it's just draw by request. I think that's how we got to do it. I love it. So uh, for those of you who, do, who don't know, we have, we did how many episodes? We've done 56 episodes of live drawing during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic here from the studio. We did them daily throughout the month of March and um, April. And uh, now we kind of go on sporadically, right, Ange? We kind of go on from time to time. Absolutely. But Pia, who's the owner of Turning the Page, asked us if we would do something special for her bookstore. And we said, absolutely, we're happy to do it. I see a lot of familiar faces are here, which is terrific. Thank you all for tuning in to this special um, episode of Drawn to Fantasy called Turning the Page, a birthday edition. So we're here. Uh, so I have it. Uh, um, Pia had told me that um, some there were some fans who have been reading the Spiderwick books, and um, of course our dogs are here. If you've tuned into uh, our live feeds before, you know that our dogs, who are quiet throughout the entire day, decide that it's time to bark and chase and rip at each other's throats. Um, you know when we go live, that's that's kind of how they do it. Anyways, we'll do a little uh, warm-up sketch for you guys, and then maybe we'll um, we'll take some requests. Of course, I'm always happy to take questions, and Ange will be here to help. I think she ran upstairs to go uh, cope with the dogs, but um, thank you guys all so much. Uh, like I said, I see a lot of familiar names here for turning up and supporting a local bookstore uh, in, in uh, Newtown, Connecticut, Oh, yeah? Where are they, Ange? I'm going to tell you. Tell me exactly. Well, they're on their page, so anyone who's uh, actually tuned in right now would probably know better than I would. <laughs> All right. So, although close to Newtown, it is actually in Monroe, Connecticut. Okay. And, now you, and the more you know. The more I know. <laughs> and now I know more. Do a little thimble tack drawing here. Thimble tack um, doesn't like uh, the dentist, Ange. Most brownies don't, so he's got a, uh, you know, kind of mouse-like teeth, I'm going to say. Rat-like, mouse-like teeth. I haven't, I did a couple little warm-ups of thimble tack during the, uh, the quarantine period, or kind of our, our lockdown period, but I haven't drawn him in a little while, so it's kind of nice to, to revisit him. Again, Thimble Tack was a brownie who was inspired by the folklore uh, about brownies. Usually, what English, Irish, yes, Scottish, Wales, yep, all the ish. Considered a house spirit, brownies are helpful and usually um, um, will do kind things. I uh, you sometimes sometimes the folklore talks about them doing it at night. So if you think of the story, the elves and the shoemaker, that's a very good example of uh, a group of brownies doing some work. Uh, of course, there's the borrowers, which was a 
fantastic book that I loved reading growing up and was made into a film by Hayao Miyazaki. Um, geez, when was it? 2014, maybe? I'm trying to remember. I remember taking Sophia, our daughter, to... Remember the Littles? I do remember the Littles. They were, they were, they were probably like brownies, brownies too. Brownies. Now, according to original folklore, the whole thing with the brownie actually was... And we cut this out of Spiderwick because we just thought it was a little... Um, a little odd was that the brownies love to work in their birthday suit, Ange. Yes. They're hairy like little mice, little rats. And the original folklore was if you gave brownie clothing, that would upset and insult the brownie and it would become a bog art. Mm. Holly Black and I decided it would, uh, that wasn't going to work for us, but um, we preferred that the brownies need to be appreciated for their hard work. I think that's something anybody would want to be appreciated for their, their house chores. And so if they were under, if they were not appreciated for the work they did, they became bog arts. Ooh, mischievous. Mischievous bog arts, which I've been known to do. I think we all have had the capacity to become a bog art from time to time. I'm excited because it seems like we've got a lot of our visitors here today. And of course we are on not your page, which we're usually on. That's right. We're on the turning the page page. The turning the page page. And um, so I know we have a lot of turning the page folks here as well. And Pia let us know that you guys have been reading the Spiderwick Chronicles. It sounds like you may have done a book club reading the Spiderwick Chronicles. So if you guys have any questions, um, you can post them in the comments below. That's right. Uh, and then I can share them with Tony because, you know, he can draw and talk at the same time as you can plainly see. It's one of the few things I can actually do simultaneously. But yes, <laughs> drawing and talking indeed. So here's a little thimble tack. Pretty much drawn from memory at this point. I've drawn him so many darn times I can do it. Everyone's always a little different. He's got hair. He's got whiskers like a mouse. So he's, he's appeased with what, honey? Well, in the in film, the he was, film, in the film, he was appeased. appeased with honey they and need, crackers. Yeah, right? they needed to simplify it so that, it, you know, everyone could understand it. Um, Jennifer LaForce Fisher said, we were in the book club. Oh, so that's awesome. awesome. Hi, Jennifer. Thanks. I hope you enjoyed the Spiderwick Chronicles. And I'm curious, did you guys read the original five books or did you read all eight books? Or did you just read the first book? Did you, what did you guys do? We're so curious. Yes. Tell us more about your Spiderwick adventure. Oh yeah, and if you guys feel free to post some shout outs and wish a happy birth anniversary, anniversary. All those things <laughs> to our friends. <laughs> At Turning the Page. Ange, does Turning the Page, they're open right now, correct? Like, well, they're not open to the public, but they're open for book sales, correct? Think, well, Pia could probably clarify, because I know she was she was telling me, I know they're open right now. Okay. Um, Appointment she, only? I don't, well, Pia can let us know, because I was on the phone with her earlier, and the dog started going crazy. And Imagine she was that. telling me the details of the status of the actual shop. Okay. Um, I know for for a fact they were doing pickup at one point. Okay. But I'm not sure if you're able to actually enter the store and browse. I think Pia is here, so maybe you can set set me straight on that. Okay, sounds good. Pia, let us know and let us know if they sh if you guys are shipping books, and if so, if you're shipping domestically or internationally. That's a question I often get from our friends overseas. So we have a friend. Uh, named Beatrice here. She's nine years old, and she was in the Spiderwick Book Club. Hello. And she wanted to know, can you please draw Mulgarath? Mulgarath. I think I can do a Mulgarath. So here's a thimble tack. He's here. He is ready to join in. The book club read all five books. Maureen, let us know. All right. Good to know. Well, if you're interested in continuing the Spiderwick saga, Holly Black and I did... Uh, write three additional books called Beyond the Spiderwick, which focuses on a different group of kids and in a different part of the country. However, you may see some cameos by the Grace Kids as well. Um, today is the 15th, is I believe. It? I don't, I don't know. It's a blur. It's anymore. Slurs Day, the 15th. in June. I feel like I could just, I could write June on stuff. That's about That's it. it. And I think today is Tuesday, right? All right. I'm going to go with that. I like that. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Here, let's no, see. Today is Monday. Oh. Yeah, I know. We had a marathon uh, game of D&D &D this weekend, which was uh, fun. We let people into our house, which was uh, a little anxiety-producing, but it was just a small group, 
four people, and uh, everyone's been kind of quarantined now for months. Oh, the, and we had a good only time. Three of them came into our house. That's right. That's right. That, oh, I'm thinking. Yeah. I don't <laughs> I like, know. I don't know what I'm thinking about. Um. Oh. Okay. So Pia, let us know. Well, this is exciting. Uh, we ship books domestically. So okay. Pia, yes, turning the page does ship, and they ship domestically, but are also up for a challenge, and they do carry the Spiderwick Chronicles. So you guys nice. can definitely check that out. Um, Pia, let us know if people can come in and come into your store. That portion of our conversation um, was masked by the barking of, of our dogs, dogs mauling one another. All right, Mogarath has basically got a meatball for a head. It's got a big kind of toady head. <laughs> You're right, Mike. God, the garbage truck woke you, woke you up. That's how you know it's Monday. That's awesome. That actually happened at our house this morning, too. I should have known. Yeah. Mulgrath is blind in one eye from some unforeseen or unknown battle. Mm. Annie Scarano also said, we read all five books in the book club. So book club friends, obviously anybody can ask a question, but book club friends, um, if you guys have specific questions about Spiderwick, shoot them our way and Tony can answer them directly for you. Or certainly try. So Mulgarath also has these, what were almost like, what should be an impressive <laughs> rack of, of horns is more like dead branches. It's hard for Pia to be this quiet, but she says they also have a bookshop on bookshop.org, which is awesome because you can still order your books online, get your books shipped to you, but you're actually purchasing them through a store through like a, a, what, like a virtual store within bookshop.org. So instead of just buying from a big kind of conglomerate online, you're still supporting and buying books from your local independent. Um, nice. And turning the pages on there. So bookshop.org uh, slash forward slash shop forward slash turning the page books. So you guys can feel free. Ah, Adeline Martin asks, was any Spiderwick character based on Ange or Sophia? Oh, that's a good question. Um, Sophia was not born yet when uh, we were working on the Spiderwick books. She, she was so young that she actually traveled with us to the movie premieres. She was one year old. Oh, Younger the phone's that. ringing. It could be turning the page books. Who knows? No, it's spam. It's spam. Should we answer it? Yeah. Just to see. Put on speakerphone. I answered it. Oh, you answered it. <laughs> Click. Click. <laughs> oh, no, you answered it. Even if you hung up on them, now they're going to call all the time as opposed to them calling all oh, the time. Yeah. Can't get it right. Um, um, so no, so Sophia was not born yet. Um, and, um, in fact, she traveled with us uh, to Cali to Los Angeles and New York for the, pr the movie premieres. <laughs> Kevin Sylvester. And um, also, oh, yet another call. Oh, my. It's like they always know. They know. Hey, they... it's Pia. Hold on. What What happened? You went away. Oh, Pia was calling. That time. The other time was spam. Oh, okay. <laughs> Pick up and say you're live on the radio. I should have done that. Oh, yeah. There you go. Hey, anybody have any requests? Call in. How about when they call me and I answer and I say, congratulations, you're our 27th caller. You just won a trip for two, all expenses paid, to, to Acapulco. <laughs> to Turning the Page. <laughs> turning the Page books, where books and et cetera <laughs> are sold. All right. We've got a moment. So were any, book, any characters based on me? I want... I don't think so. I don't think so. I think um, other the other books of yours, like the broken ornaments. Definitely, tinsel is very much you, um, the personality wise. I would say Jared Grace was more Holly's husband. Theo was based. Jared was kind of based on Holly's husband, and um, Arthur Spiderwick was based on the legendary. Uh, fairy artist and fairy tale artist Arthur Rackham, which the books are dedicated to. 
So a little bit of insight there. Mm -hmm. I'm trained, let's see. I was so well, young. Also, I barely knew so, what I was doing when we were doing these books, right, Ange? You knew what you were doing. Oh, I knew. You really knew what you were doing. Um, uh, extra bit of trivia, the Spiderwick Mansion is actually based on a few different things. Um, one is Holly Black grew up in an old Victorian home herself. She did. As she described the Spiderwick estate being shacks upon shacks. Yes, that house uh, is no longer standing, but I did get to see it. She took took me there, and it was abandoned, at, I think, at the time, or about to be. Yes. Um, and then on top of that, uh, at the time when Tony and Holly were working on the books, Tony would get the manuscript, so they would discuss the story, and then Tony would start sketching. And at the time, we then drove around town. We live in Massachusetts. Um, and so there's two homes that the Spiderwick estate is actually based on. So if you find yourself in Greenfield, Massachusetts, one of those houses is right on the main street. Yes. Um, and then if you find yourself in Northampton, Massachusetts, you can find one of the other homes that the Spiderwick estate so is on, based on. Is it Route 9? Is it called Route 9 when it's in Northampton? But know. it's the road, the main road leading to Florence. You can actually see, it's pretty obvious when you see the house. Oh, sorry, I missed Jennifer LaForce's question about Snow White, Pia. Um, oh, it says, okay. Uh, Jennifer LaForce Fisher says, in the fourth book, did you purposely make it look like the dwarves were carrying Mallory like the seven dwarves in Snow White? Yes, many of the um, Spiderwick books pay homage to the classic fairy tales that inspired both Holly and I. So, um, and in fact, I think in that book, I think even Simon kind of makes a joke of like dwarves, they're not very high ho high ho meaning the Disney movie of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, based on the tales by the brothers Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm. So it was um, definitely an homage to that uh, story. And the, I, the idea too of like this, this fairy tale that many of us know and, and love or don't love, but no, mostly probably because of the Walt Disney animated film. And so, um, you know, the original fairy tale, like so many of those old fairy tales, is much darker. And um, so we wanted a little bit of that kind of creepiness. And we also wanted, of course, the kids to be modern day kids that were kind of exploring all these um, kind of places that seemed very fairy tale-ish. And that, I mean, that's kind of what the Spiderwick books was like, was that the fairies in this, these books were much closer to how they were originally depicted in fairy tales long ago and not the kind of sanitized version that, that we've seen now in, you know, m you know, movies and shows and, you know, video games and apps, etc. Uh, another homage would be the, um, there's an homage to Lewis Carroll's Alice's Adventures in Wonderland in book three, when the kids meet the Puka, which is a, um, a, a Welsh fairy uh, trickster type and he, in uh, it takes many forms but it's usually a black rabbit or a black mule um, in the spiderweb books it takes the form of a black rabbit and um, the illustration mimics the Cheshire cat illustration a very classic illustration by Sir John Tenniel in the original Alice's Adventures in Wonderland published in 1865 written by Lewis Carroll and I and Angie can tell you I'm such a nerd. I just recited all that off the top of my head. I have no cue cards with information. Anyway, uh, I think Mulgrath's done, Ange. I think he looks happy. I think he wants a cheeseburger. Christopher Lee Clark wants to know, does Mulgrath have a brother or a sister? Oh, that's a really good question, and I don't know the answer to that. I mean, wow, what would a Lady Mulgrath look this like? This is a Lady Mulgrath. <laughs> this is Mulgrath's mom. Mm -mm. Hello, little Mogi. How are you? Do you want some milk? <laughs> Eat your lima beans. <laughs> oh, yeah, Mulgrave hates lima beans. <laughs> um, let's see, Carrie Detone, maybe I'm D D Dan Tone, sorry, Dan Tony, wants to know where did you get your inspiration? For the Spiderwick books? Sounds like it. Uh, Spiderwick books were inspired by a variety of sources. Um, first and foremost, the idea of, of actual living uh, encounters with fairies. We had collected many stories of 
children and adults alike who had claimed they had actually seen fairies. They, they stories often started with, I know this sounds crazy, but hear me out. <laughs> um, it was also inspired by a field guide I had made when I was 15 years old. Uh, and I had spent the summer creating a field guide to dragons and trolls and goblins. And it was inspired by the Dark Crystal and Dungeons and Dragons and uh, just all kinds of thing, fantasy things that I was so into at the time. Um, and so, um, you know, that and the, of course, the original folklore, which inspired both Holly and myself. Jason Alona, who is Jason. Jason, one of our big drawn to fantasy fans. Thanks Thank for you. coming Thank you. Thanks today, for coming Jason. over here, Jason. Um, shared a little tidbit of trivia. Ooh, what's he got? Which is, does the book club know about your and Holly's cameo in the fourth book? Oh, that that's a great little bit that of trivia. That is a good little t bit of trivia. Yes, that's right. In the um, if you look, there are actually hidden things throughout a lot of the books, uh, little Easter eggs here and there. Um, but yes, in the I believe in the fourth book at Mallory's uh, fencing match, sitting in the audience in front of the Grace kids is a cameo by yours truly, uh, Anne Holly Black. Wow, wouldn't it be cool if they did like a live action version of that scene and you and Holly could like we could all sit in the oh my god in I'd the love bleachers that. and watch it'd be so cool that would be cool who knows who knows maybe it'll happen one day uh Susie Hammond said what is your favorite Spider-Man character Ooh, that's a good question I get that one a lot Holly and I used to have a very fierce debate about this um Holly's favorite character was uh, Thimbletack. She loved Thimbletack. And my favorite character uh, was Hogsqueal. I loved Hogsqueal, I think because he's eating all the time, which is very similar uh, lifestyle to mine. And the fact that he was uh, seemed to be a scoundrel, but actually had a heart of gold. Except for, you know, biting the heads off birds. Well, he bit the head off Mulgarath. That's true. So he must have been a, a Black Sabbath Ozzy Osbourne mm -hmm. fan as well. <laughs> Uh, Jennifer LaForce Fisher says, do the Beyond the spider Chronicles books pick up from where the fifth book ended? They do, in a way. A couple years later, the Grace kids are in them, but they are not the main characters. <laughs> it follows a new set of characters, but it definitely opens up a lot more of what was going on when Arthur Spiderwick was making his field guide. Someone just hollered, Alfonso said, bird! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's great. Yeah, there were some great lines in the movie and you know, I I I thought some of the writing was was really well done and and the effects were certainly terrific by Industrial Light and Magic and and Phil Tippett Studios and uh you know, overall we very pleased with the film adaptation given the time period that it was done in and also the fact that, you know, by that point the Lord of the Rings films had been made. Harry Potter films were being made. There was a lot of fantasy films out at that time. Remember, Ange? Oh, my gosh. Aragon. That's right. Uh, Aragon. There was a lot. Lemony of... Snicket kind of falls in this same thing. There was just a lot of this kind of stuff out there. Big so, fantasy. I think there was a little bit of fatigue of these kinds of movies when, when the film first came out. But, you know, it's got its own following. People really like it. And, you know, I'm one of them. <laughs> um, Jennifer says, did you base characters on real people, you know? Well, we did answer that one. Uh, Holly did base um, Jared on her husband, uh, Theo, when he was younger. And Arthur Spiderwick was based off of um, Arthur Rackham. And her grandmother's name was Lucinda. Was it? No. Ho Holly had Holly, Yeah, Holly. I, I did use reference of it. Holly's grandmother, I think, for the Lucinda drawing. I thought mm. she had... Hmm. I don't know. Mm. Um, any, uh, any more requests? We've probably got time for maybe one more we can sneak in. Sure, absolutely. Anything else you want to see T draw, let us know. Um, he can always draw something from one of his other books. Uh, I've been even known to draw some random Harry Potter stuff. Anything you'd like. Could you, you draw something? I mean, well, I mean, I would ask this question, which I think would be great to share with them. Your next book coming out is going to be this fall. And oh, yes. The sequel to Kenny and the Dragon. That's right. And it is called Kenny, Kenny and the Book, Book of, of Beasts. Beasts. So maybe you could draw a little something from Kenny and the Book of Beasts. Well, let's draw Kenny. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. a good one. So Kenny is a rabbit. And the original uh, book, Kenny and the Dragon, came out 
Um, right after the Spiderwick books were finished, I believe. And then we have one other request for a drawing after this. Oh, really? All right, so I'll make this a very quick Kenny. This is good, Adeline, because I can also pull up reference while um, Tony is working on this Kenny drawing. All right. So Kenny is a rabbit. He was, um, I, he, the whole story, the original book was inspired by an old uh, favorite of mine called The Reluctant Dragon, written by a man named Kenneth Graham. Kenneth Graham also wrote um, another one of my favorite stories growing up, The Wind in the Willows. And so as I was doing this retelling of, of um, The Reluctant Dragon, I thought, wouldn't it be kind of interesting to also have um, talking animals, anthropomorphic animals, as the characters instead of humans. I felt like it would be a more interesting uh, concept than just people dealing with it. People are always dealing with dragons, but what about what if you're a rabbit and you're dealing with a dragon? I thought that was kind of interesting. And um, it was actually my manager, Ellen Goldsmith Vane, who at the time who had said, um, you know, this is the same guy that wrote The Wind in the Willows. What if you, what if you use uh, talking animals? I thought that was kind of neat. So that was how I got the idea. And many years later, I have finally penned a sequel about uh, further adventures of Kenny and his best friend, Graham the Dragon, named after the original author. Really not hiding it that I was so inspired by that original story. And so I named him uh, the two friends after uh, Kenneth Graham, the original author. And just pr printing something for me to... Ask and you shall receive, my friends. All right. Oh, thank you so much. You are so awesome, Micah. He said, I just bought a book from Turning the Pages online shop since I'm not able to get myself to Connecticut. Oh, that's awesome. You are awesome. awesome. Thanks, Micah. That's very cool. All right, Angela, little Kenny. Uh... <laughs> I love it. Jill, Jill Suzanne Shipman said, I just saw Jason Alona posting and I had to do a double take because I thought it was Jason Momoa. Oh, man. We'll get him. He'll do the... Uh... He'll do the, the next thank you video, uh, Jill. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure Angela's already working on it, figuring out ways to make it happen. I need to do that. You really got to get on that. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, Rex White asks, have you ever read someone else's novels and drew your idea of the characters before other images came out? Um, I have read other novels and sketch. I mean, I've sketched characters from, you know, Richard Adams' Watership Down. I've sketched... I did a bunch of drawings from um, after we finished the Prydain books by Lloyd Alexander. So that's like the Black Cauldron and the Horned King and Castle Lear and stuff. Those are great books. Um, you know, I do. Sometimes I do. I'll just be inspired and I want to, um, you know, do just do some sketches of those things. I've drawn characters from Edgar Rice Burroughs books, which were um, big inspiration to me growing up. All right. So here's you Kenny. Tend to, you draw a lot while we're, even when we're watching movies. We were watching The Hobbit the other night. That's right. And, and you I were was drawing, drawing when we were watching The Hobbit. All right, here's Kenny Rabbit. Just a quick portrait of Kenny. All right, Angie, you said we have a request? Yes, we had a request. I'm scrolling back so I can remember who posted this request. Um, and I will get there in just as... Oh, Adeline Martin said... And she had posted this at the beginning. So, okay. of course, asking you shall receive. I uh, She asked for your version of Edna Mode... From the Incredibles. <laughs> <laughs> Edna Mode. <laughs> oh my gosh, wasn't she inspired by what's her face from? Um, she's like a fashion icon. From Vogue. Is it what's from... it supposed to be? What's her face from Vogue? I think so. All right, my version of Edna Mode. Is it M O D E? Correct. So that's how you say it. Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, the original design is so good. I don't know if there's much I can do. To, in, to improve it, but I will try. I will Anna try. Anna Wintour. Anna Wintour, thank you. Aw, thanks, Emily. You're awesome. She ordered some books. Cheers from California. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, you guys, Anna Wintour, exactly. Anna Wintour. You guys are on it. I don't even know why I bother trying to google things or figure it out i just pose it to you guys you guys know all the things yes uh, 
This was a great movie. I loved the uh, I loved the Incredibles. <laughs> the original maybe more so than the sequel. Uh, I, the sequel oh, wasn't bad, but uh, yeah. the original was so much more better. So good. Yeah, it was so much more better. <laughs> so much more. So much, much more, more. Much more better. So much more, much more. Um, if in the movie did you combine all the books, including the Beyond the Spiderwick series? They did not. No, as a matter of fact, it is doesn't have even all five of the books. It really focuses on books one, books two, a little bit of book three, and book five. So no dwarves, no puka. Um, it wasn't not for wanting it, though. They were originally setting out to do much of it, but it just... Every single scene they kept adding just kept making it more and more expensive. So mm -hmm. they finally had to dial it in. And and you don't get to see Mulgrath. You see Mulgrath's castle in the background of one scene, but you never you never get to go in it, which is kind of a real shame. Anyway, here we go. Edna Mode. Which was voiced by the director, I, I believe. Someone just mentioned that. See what I mean? Kevin Sylvester He's on said it. He Brad knows. Bird did Edna's voice. Yes, I remember that little bit of trivia as well. I'm big Thank Pix you, Kevin Sylvester. Big Pixar fan, so I also love love that kind of trivia. And G DJ Ladina also said the same thing. Wow. You guys are on it. You know all the things. You know the things. So here she is reading a... Um, wow, she's got a really interesting... It's like armor... It's like an armored dress. <laughs> I'm guessing she would sit like this with her legs. Luisa it, Diamante has an aunt named Edna who looks and talks like Edna. Oh, that's wonderful, darling. Wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> I hope she blasts you with uh, flamethrowers to see if your clothes are superhero quality. <laughs> but no capes. No capes, darling. No capes. <laughs> Okay, and now sitting in a chair reading. Wait for it. Wait. Spider. Is that too self? I feel like it was like a full circle moment. It seemed seemed good. Here's Jared with his goggle. You can draw one more thing or what? What are you gonna draw? One more thing. One more thing. What do you think? One more for the road. One more for the road. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hello, Deanne Pesquera. <laughs> Pia loves no capes. Mm, Marissa says, "Which superpower would you want?" Oh, flying! I if I could it. get, if I could get over the fact that I'd be terrified, probably. You know, what if I mean? you knew that it was going to work, like if you knew, okay, I can fly. There's no going to be, there's not going to be any malfunctioning in my flying ability. I believe I can touch the sky, that kind mm -hmm. of, yeah. Yeah, I mean, who wouldn't want to fly? Ooh, I have an idea. All I right. like your idea, Alfonso. What's Alfonso got? He says, you and Ange. What about... Oh, he wants me to draw you and I? Yeah, but what about a, a doodle version of us? Okay. With our party hats on, celebrating... Turning the pages. All right, sounds Birth good. Anniversary. Here it is. Last one for the day. First anniversary. Oh, the dogs are. The dogs on like that. Stairs. See how you got? Oh, you got your hair pulled back. Do you want your hair pulled back or no? Whatever you. She's got her whatever hair pulled. Your, whatever your vision is, darling. I better get your lipstick right. I know. Even though I just got went to the store and I had my mask on. I'm still wearing lipstick. Of course. Pippin's happy. I wonder if we got a delivery or something. Could be. <gasps> Ooh, what could it be? I hope so. Something fun. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Toilet paper? <laughs> you never, it's never, uh, it, it's going to be forever. Toilet paper. We're always going to want toilet paper. <laughs> Man of birth three. Anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. That's the one to sing, not the Little River Band song, apparently, right? Not happy anniversary. No, that, that's baby. all about breaking up. I know. That's what I'm saying. You don't sing that one. Wow, that, for some reason, for a second, looked like you were drawing you. 
It's true. Once this is me. Together, once you've been what together you for about? a long time, you start looking alike. You've got your hair in a little pom pom. So I'm gonna. Does go Ange have a mask with kiss marks? No, I do. Well, wow. oh, actually, you're right. Yeah, I do. Um, like on the inside, but the lining is black. Um, we have a great friend and uh, fan who actually made masks for us, and so we have Star Wars masks and Harry Potter masks. Yes. <laughs> uh, Marissa says, I can't wait to go to a library and get nature books to draw from. Yeah, I can understand that. I know, but you could just go outside. You can go outside. You can go outside now. It's okay. I often confuse what is going on with a zombie apocalypse, so I get it. I had to remind myself, definitely in the first couple of months, where I was like, you can go outside. You I'm actually walk getting outside a, of your door. I'm getting a haircut this week. It's the first time in... Three months? I know. It's, yeah. See? See how she's like, uh-huh, Well, yeah. no, that's not true. I gave you a haircut. So it's, oh, not, it's your that's, first that's right. fully professional. I would say I'm semi-professional. Yeah, you did a great job. Yeah. So this is your first fully professional hair appointment, haircut. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right, Tony and Ange. <laughs> a great Very job. happy. This is completely the zombie apocalypse, Deanne says. Yes. Do you draw on holidays? Sometimes. Sometimes I have to and sometimes I want to. I have to sometimes when I have a, uh, a deadline. I know there's been Christmas days where I'm like, I gotta go draw for a little bit. Like if a book's due. Because like, sometimes you can make up time during the Christmas break because the publishers are all there. So if you have a deadline that's like early January the publishers are not everyone's home on on uh, winter break you can actually get some work done and you're not bothered uh happy birthday let's see if we can do the the fancy writing okay i can't but i'm trying turning you got this the i don't know can you see it i want to make sure you can see is it is it that is it as bad as i think it is yeah i'm guessing it is no, it's good. Maybe add a dog on the right. <laughs> add a dog? Oh, right, yes. There's oh, yes. So for us, yes. It but would... can put it on the right if you want it to be more. No, Pippin would be right here. Okay. He would totally yeah. be like right there. Barking normally, but today he'll be just. You guys, as we mentioned, we are, we, we are not just here just to hang out. We are here to support... Pia and turning the page books and Pia we cannot wait till we get to come and visit you in person um, and hopefully we could do an event for you in person which would be so much fun yep um, but in the meantime guys if you need to order books if there's books that you've been thinking about that you need and you're like oh I want to get a copy of that you know what turn in the page do it now turn the page hop on bookshop.org order some uh, books and go to turning the pages Virtual bookshop online. All right, Ange, cue the music. We did it. Da -da -da! Pippin completes it, right? Pippin really does, and he'd be wearing a tiny hat. Yes, too. That would go I agree. Right there. I agree. There it is. Do, 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 do. There it is. Uh, I want to thank Pia and the entire staff from Turning the Page for uh, inviting me. Um, hold on. Merp. There it is. You want to stand up? No. <laughs> She's like, no, I just got back from the grocery store. Come on, they want to see you. They will see, we're reenacting it. The camera's oh, in. Oh, hold on, let me put the music up. She's putting up the music. There it is. Their theme song by Tom Hoffelder. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to this special edition of Drawn to Fantasy. Thank you, Pia, and the entire staff of Turning the Page for having us. I hope you guys are well, you're safe. Maybe we all be kind a little bit to one another. That's what I always say to Soph every day. Now that she's in middle school, I still say it. Be a good friend, be a good listener, and do your best. That's all we can do, right? That's right, Ange? guys. And guess what? Keep reading. Yes, yes. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye, Pia. Congratulations. Happy birthday. Happy anniversary. I don't know how to turn it off. Hold on. Oh, there it is. Oh, that's the button. Bye.